Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a catapult. No! <laughs> Big thanks to you guys. You helped this channel hit 2 million subscribers, which is awesome. So we were gonna celebrate and I asked my kids what we should do and they said we should make a catapult. So with very little planning, I went and bought some hardware and some two by fours. We're gonna figure it out. Let's do it. All right, picked up some random stuff. I'm not gonna use it all probably, but I think we're also gonna use the bucket, which would be kind of cool. First, we gotta cut down some of these two by fours down into some sizes and start to build a frame. I'm gonna do that, and then we're gonna cut down one in half just to make the uprights and then make some diagonals. And there's gonna be a lot of force going back and forth on this thing, so we're gonna put in a diagonal here and one there just to reinforce it. I'm just using these tie straps to kind of put everything together because it's strong and it's quick. Um, we may have some problems with strength, but we'll figure that out when we get to it. I'm just gonna take the off cut from that center piece and put a 45 degree angle on each end of it so it should fit right in there. So while I was at the store, I just thought about the kind of shape of this whole thing. And I thought about the quickest possible and cheapest way to attach these pieces so that I didn't have to worry about joinery or pocket holes or any of that stuff. And these tie straps are often used in construction or like making decks. They're just quick and strong and they're not gonna work in cutting the load in every direction, but they should work pretty well for this particular use. All right, I got one side of the frame done. Now I just have to make a duplicate. There you go, now I just gotta connect them together. To connect these together, I got this piece of threaded rod. I'm gonna use this as the kind of pivot for the arm. So this is kind of the maximum that these pieces can be apart from each other, and I think that'll be all right. I'm gonna cut down some two by fours that kind of match this length to tie the bottoms together. Again, for this project, I was going for quick and dirty. I got some long wood screws to drive in through the outside of the frame into the 2x4 pieces in the middle. This is going into the end grain, so it's not super strong. It probably won't last forever, but it really doesn't need to. After I got the two frames connected, I figured out where to put the hole to drive in the threaded rod. This is going to act as my axle, and the whole arm is going to pivot over this point. After I got that rod in place, I laid the arm on top of it and then stood it up to figure out where it needed to pivot. And by the way, this arm is just an aluminum channel that I happen to have. I have no idea where it came from. I chose it because it would be lighter than a 2x4, but pretty strong due to its shape. I drilled out holes in this big enough for the threaded rod to go through. And the arm was a little bit too long, so I put it in place, marked the excess, and trimmed it with a cutoff wheel. I cut off this threaded rod so it fits in between these two pieces of wood. So we're gonna thread it through the arm and keep it captive with a couple of nuts and then put on some two by four pieces on the outside to keep that rod from being able to slide in and out. The bottom of the frames were connected, but the top was a little bit loose, so I temporarily added a support to lock them together. The frame's all connected up and the arm is in place and ready to move, so we're gonna do some tests because I really have no idea how this is gonna go. We're gonna run a screw through this arm into a piece of dowel, and then that gives us a place to hook the rubber hose around so we can clamp it up there, run it around here, and do some tests to see how it works. I got a roll of surgical tubing. You can get this pretty much anywhere. It's really stretchy and really cheap. All right. <laughs> I don't know how to. I think, it, I think it'll work. Tests actually work pretty well, but 
This thing hits this cross piece and that's gonna be bad for that long term. It's not gonna survive, it's gonna end up bending, I think if it slams into that. So I'm gonna take this off and try to figure out a way to reinforce both of these side pieces so that they're strong enough and this is fully open for that piece to just fall all the way down. We realized that the plates were actually on the inside and the outside. They both need to be on the outside because that plate will hold it together out here and then the surface to surface contact on the two by fours is gonna stop it from being able to lean in as much. So we're testing the brake on there to make sure that it doesn't hit the frame. Ready? That worked pretty well. I found these little locks, and basically when you pull back on this piece, it pulls the lock barrel in. Now the other side of it is supposed to be some sort of a thing that will go down and slip into. Instead, we're gonna use just a little shelf to do the same thing. It's gonna come down over that and lock underneath it, and that will hold the whole thing in tension. Then you pull this piece back, and it should launch the whole catapult. I put really long screws in here because these are gonna be counteracting all of the tension that's gonna to wanna to pull this thing up. So when we bring it down, theoretically, should lock into place, and now it's captive. To fire the catapult, we have to pull both of these latches at the same time, and we need to do it from a safe distance, like way back there. So we're connecting them together with a short rope, and then we'll have a longer rope connected loosely to that one so that they can be pulled from really far back. I need to make a way for the hose to go around and hook on the back side of the arm, and we're gonna use a small eyelet for that. Since that's gonna come in from the bottom, I'm gonna put a little scrap piece of wood in the top for it to go into. I think everything's ready to put on the rubber tubing, although I don't have any idea how long this piece needs to be, because I don't know how much it's gonna stretch. So I'm gonna start on the one side and weave it through and then tie it on the other side, and then we'll kind of work backwards to figure out where to cut it off. I've got this stuff folded over on itself, and it should create enough friction to hold it in place. And to keep it there, we're gonna use some zip ties, see how that works. Now for the thing that actually holds our projectile. I had some different ideas and actually Josh found this in the shop and this is gonna work perfectly. So I think we're just gonna attach this to the end of the bar. And to do that, again, we're gonna use zip ties. So I think we're just gonna put it here, drill some holes in the inside here so that we have a place to zip tie around. And if that's not quite strong enough, we can reinforce it with duct tape. So there's a lot that could go wrong with this. I understand that this is a semi-dangerous thing. So I'm not saying that you should make one of these, but we wanted to make one. Now I don't have any idea if the tension is gonna to be too much, too little on this thing. There's a possibility that it could fall apart when it launches. There's a possibility that the locks could come loose, that the rubber could rip, that the two by fours could fall apart. All sorts of stuff could go wrong. But I'm right now I'm just trying to lock it in and see how the tension is. And that works so far. All right, it's time to take it outside and test it. 
All right, now this is not a whole lot of tension, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway with a kind of heavy ball. I don't think it's gonna do super well. I think it needs to be tighter, but. All right, in three, two, one. It works, it works, but it definitely needs more power. All right, this is a lot tighter. This one scares me a little bit. Same ball, test two. All right, this is doubled up. Three point shot. I want to say a big thanks to you guys for subscribing to the channel, for getting us to 2 million. It's amazing, and I'm really grateful for each and every one of you. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to go ahead and do that. And also, we've got tons of other videos of all different types that you may be interested in. Be sure to check some of those out. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah. Plates were on the same side, and they actually need to be opposite so that when it tries to... <laughs> <laughs> these wheels.